In this video, I'm gonna show you five hidden features in Final Cut Pro that are gonna make your editing life so much easier. The first feature has to do with drop zones. Now working with drop zones in Final Cut Pro is already a tedious and frustrating task, but hopefully this will make the process a little bit more bearable. So I have this picture frame with a drop zone and I want to bring in a photo of this lovely couple hanging out together. All I need to do normally is go on over into my inspector on the right hand side, locate the drop zone, click on the down arrow and locate the portion of the video that I want to serve as the drop zone. Then I can push apply clip. However, you'll notice that the couple is slightly off to the side. Now, if the plugin developer, which in this case was kind enough, they might've given you the drop zone pan and zoom options, but I can find that working with these numbers can be a little bit frustrating. So there is a much easier way. All you need to do is double click on the drop zone and you'll see that it now gives me the option of dragging this around wherever I need to, plus I can scale it up as much as I like. So if we wanted to zoom in just on the girl, we could do just that. And this even works if the plugin creator did not publish the options for drop zone, pan, and scale. The second hidden feature works with speed ramping. Let's say there's a portion of our video that we want to speed ramp. I'll go ahead and find that moment, then I'll push shift B to create a blade in our speed ramping. From there, we could of course change the speed on this first segment. I'll click on this down arrow and we'll select something like eight times speed and we'll push play. But later on while you're editing, you might've noticed that you didn't really like where the speed ramp ends. To adjust that, rather than going in and resetting the speed on everything, just double click on the handle that's found right here. We'll click on that and you'll see that we have two options, speed transition and source frame. You can of course disable the speed transition if you want it to just be a hard cut with your speed ramp, but I tend to like to leave that on. Underneath that, however, is the source frame. If we click on this, that will give you the option to edit it and now we can click and drag and you'll notice how this is adjusting where the speed ramp is ending. So if we wanted to end the speed ramp way later in our video, we could do just that or we could end it way earlier. This next option comes into play when you're trying to dial in all your parameters here on the right hand side. You'll notice that it's kind of cramped and maybe we could expand it out by dragging this down. That sometimes works. But if you want to leave your timeline fully expanded as it was, but you still want to see all of the options found here on the right hand side, all you need to do is come up to the very top and double click on this bar. That will toggle the inspector height and make it much taller, making your life a little bit easier so you can really dial in all of the parameters at once without having to scroll up and down. The fourth hidden feature in Final Cut Pro comes massively in handy when you're working with titles. In my viewer, you'll see that I have a title with two separate lines. If I wanted to edit it, I usually can just double click on it and try and edit. But you'll notice that the plugin developer, myself, has created this box that's covering up the original title at the top. So I can't really double click on it. It's really, really frustrating. Now, sometimes the plugin developer is kind enough to publish the parameters over here on the right side, but this plugin developer myself. did not. So how can I access the other title in this box? Well, all you need to do is go to the top left-hand side of your viewer and you'll notice these arrows. I can go ahead and click on the arrow and that will jump to the next text layer in my project. So you don't need to worry about being unable to select it. Just click on these arrows and it'll make your life so much easier. And last but not least is a hidden feature that I didn't even know existed until this week with the Ken Burns tool. To get the Ken Burns tool, we can go ahead and click on this down arrow next to transform and then select crop. Then at the bottom, you'll see the Ken Burns option. Go ahead and select that. Now you'll notice that we have a green box and a red box. If I push play, you'll notice that we have a zoom that starts out pretty slow, builds some momentum and then slows down. That is what is known as easing. But what if we wanted to change what kind of zoom we had? All we need to do is right click anywhere inside of these cropped boxes, then change the zoom type. So right now it's ease in and out. Let's go ahead and change it over to linear. And if we push play, you'll notice that we have a singular consistent zoom speed across the duration of our video. This can just add some extra flexibility with the Ken Burns tool, which I'm really happy to have in Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you 10 settings in Final Cut Pro that you should change right now. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.